Researchers are working to stop Ebola in its tracks. A team led by Arizona State University scientists has found that when control measures are quickly put into place, it can effectively contain and dramatically decrease the number of cases over time. The researchers looked at Ebola cases in Nigeria, a country with success in containing the disease. The research was funded by the NSF NIH USDA Ecology and Evolution of Infectious Diseases program. The team conducted epidemic modeling and used computer simulations to project the size of the outbreak. Interventions to control the disease were implemented during various time periods after the initial case was found. Researchers discovered that the projected effect of control measures ranged widely depending on how early those measures were put into place. The team sees the success in Nigeria as a hopeful example for other countries, including the U.S. According to the Bureau of Transportation, approximately 1.73 million passengers travel by plane every day. This steady increase of passengers coupled with weather cancellations and overbooking can cause delays that ripple through the current air traffic system. While Congress has enacted a law to bring online the next-gen air traffic control system by 2020, an NSF-funded MIT research team says the changes to the current system don't have to be major to have a huge impact. Today, aircraft can push back from the gate whenever ready. While planes can only take off one at a time, the result is a parking lot of idling planes. Studying algorithms and computer models, the team is testing ways to more efficiently release planes from airports without adding delays to the system. They found that by just holding planes back 4.4 minutes before taxing, not only cuts down on fuel consumption, but also the amount of airport emissions. With FAA approval, the team tested their methods under real airport conditions. Working with controllers, they successfully implemented new gate release rates. The tests showed that without adding delays to the system, they were able to limit idling times and save fuel. The team hopes to test their models in a new study at LaGuardia Airport and feels the fundamental nature of this work extends beyond air traffic control to many other areas. The desert signwinder rattlesnake is fast, efficient, and can easily move through a broad range of surfaces. An NSF-funded team led by Georgia Tech is studying the animal not only to better understand the snake, but also to build a better robot. Now, the original goal for this research was really to try to understand how these interesting snakes, uh, venomous sidewinding rattlesnakes, are able to achieve their incredible locomotion using a peculiar kind of locomotion, sidewinding, on a variety of granular sand terrain. Collaborating with Zoo Atlanta and Carnegie Mellon University, the team built a simulated sand dune test bed that closely resembles the snake's Arizona habitat. Using high-speed cameras, the team tracked the snakes as they maneuvered on hills at different inclinations. The team discovered a unique wave motion used by sidewinders that allows them to better traverse sandy slopes. Using an independently controlled horizontal and vertical wave motion, the snake increases the amount of body in contact with the sand to keep the sand in sound-like state. When this sidewinding motion was added to the test snake bot, it too was able to successfully climb in sand. It's been known for centuries that sidewinder rattlesnakes have this unique ability to move across sand, which is, if you think of walking on a beach, is a remarkably difficult thing to do. So it's been known for centuries that they have the ability to do that. And it's been relatively well characterized, but not in a modern sense and not from the perspective of the sand. The team says the unique collaboration between physics, biology, and robotics not only gives researchers greater insight into the sidewinder's motion, but will help build robots better suited for situations such as urban search and rescue operations, in which robots need to make their way through rubble and tight spaces. A National Science Foundation-funded team of archaeologists from the University of Alaska Fairbanks has uncovered the remains of two Ice Age infants buried more than 11,000 years ago. The discovery represents the youngest human remains ever found in the North American Arctic. One infant died shortly after birth, and the other was probably a late-term newborn. The excavation took place in central Alaska with the cooperation of local and regional native groups. The two infants were found in a pit directly below a hearth where remains of a cremated child were discovered earlier. Grave offerings included hafted projectile points and decorated antler foreshafts, part of hunting weapon systems. In, in many foraging societies, you might not expect to see uh, elaborate grave goods with very young infants. Um, we might expect that with, with adults that have achieved status somehow. 
Um, so this is interesting um, and, and a new facet of Paleo-Indian behavior that we really never encountered before. The team says this discovery offers valuable insights into parts of ancient human culture that are rarely preserved, including funeral and ritual behaviors and social organization. For more information about these stories, visit us at nsf.gov. This is NSF Science Now. I'm Dina Headley.